cannot, either in body or thought, lay aside his duties. Without any doubt should I know full enlightenment. Not should I not know it. Firmly established in the perfection of vigor he travels for the sake of beings for one mile, two. Over the distances of hundreds of thousands of codas of world systems, if only to bring just one single being to enlightenment. If he can find no persons belonging to the bodhisattva vehicle, he will establish a person belonging to the disciple vehicle in discipleship, or one belonging to the Pratyekabuddha vehicle in Pratyekabuddhahood. One single being even he establishes in the ten wholesome paths of action. Having given that gift of Dharma, he gratifies beings also with material gifts. He does not, however, dedicate that wholesome route to the level of the disciples or Pratyekabuddhas, but, having made it common to all beings, dedicates it to full enlightenment. Subhuti. How does the Bodhisattva, having stood in the perfection of vigor, acquire the perfection of morality? The Lord. Here the Bodhisattva, beginning with the first thought of enlightenment, until he is seated on the terrace of enlightenment, himself abstains from taking life, and also others he induces to abstain from taking life. He speaks in praise of the abstention from taking life, and he praises also those other people who abstain from taking life, one acquiescent. 2. He himself abstains from wrong views, and also others he induces to abstain from them. He speaks in praise of the abstention from wrong views, and he praises also those others who abstain from wrong views, one acquiescent. But through that perfection of morality, he does not base himself on the world of sense desire, the world of form, or the formless world, nor on the level of the disciples or Pratyekabuddhas. But he makes these wholesome roots common to all beings and dedicates them to full enlightenment, as before. Subhuti. How does the Bodhisattva, having stood in the perfection of vigor, acquire the perfection of patience? The Lord. As the Bodhisattva. The Great Being advances from the first thought of enlightenment to his seat on the terrace of enlightenment. If a man or ghost distracts his mind, or if his limbs are cut off from his body and carried away, the bodhisattva, firmly established in the perfection of vigor, does not think someone cuts or breaks or kills me. But on the contrary he thinks to himself. How fortunate that just those should destroy my body for whose sake I look after it or he learns to attend well to the true nature of dharmas. And he does not dedicate these wholesome roots to the level of the disciples or Pratyekabuddhas, but, having made them common to all beings, dedicates them to the supreme enlightenment. Subhuti. How does the Bodhisattva, having stood in the perfection of vigor, acquire the perfection of concentration? The Lord. Here the Bodhisattva, the Great Being, enters on the trances, the unlimited, the formless attainments, but he does not take hold of their karma result. He is reborn only where he can work the will of beings, whom he matures through the six perfections. He passes on from Buddha field to Buddha field, for the sake of honoring the Buddhas and lords and of planting wholesome roots. Subhuti. How does the Bodhisattva, having stood in the perfection of vigor, acquire the perfection of wisdom? The Lord. Here the Bodhisattva, the Great Being, having stood in the perfection of giving, as an actual entity, or as an existent, or as a sign. And so for the applications of mindfulness, to the knowledge of all modes. Reviewing all dharmas as without actual reality, existence, or sign, he does not make his home in any dharma. And as he speaks, so he acts. Subhuti. How does the Bodhisattva, having stood in the perfection of concentration, acquire the perfection of giving? The Lord. Here the Bodhisattva, the Great Being, having entered on the trances, having stood in the perfection of concentration, with whom these tracked mind gives gifts both material and spiritual. He himself gives material and spiritual gifts, he speaks in praise of giving material and spiritual gifts, and he prays also those other beings who give them, one acquiescent. And those wholesome roots he does not dedicate to the level of the disciples or Pratyekabuddhas, but, 
having made them common to all beings, he dedicates them to the supreme enlightenment. Subhuti. How does the Bodhisattva, having stood in the perfection of concentration, acquire the perfection of morality? The Lord. Here the Bodhisattva, the great being, who has stood in the perfection of concentration, does not produce a thought connected with greed, hate, delusion, or harming. He dwells only in attentions associated with the knowledge of all modes. And these wholesome roots, as before. Subhuti. How does the Bodhisattva, having stood in the perfection of concentration, acquire the perfection of patience? The Lord. Here the Bodhisattva, the Great Being, having stood in the perfection of concentration, contemplates form as a mass of foam, feeling as a bubble, perception as a mirage, the drives as a plantain tree, consciousness as like a mock show. When he contemplates thus, the conviction is set up in him that the five grasping skandhas are insubstantial. And when he thus contemplates, he thinks to himself. When all my limbs are cut off, who is it that curs, or what is it that is being cut? Whose is the body, whose the feeling, whose this perception, whose the drives, whose the consciousness? When he thus contemplates he thinks to himself. Who is it that reviles or abuses, or feels ill will when reviled or abused? Subhuti. How does the Bodhisattva, having stood in the perfection of concentration, acquire the perfection of vigor? The Lord. Here the Bodhisattva, the great being, who has stood in the perfection of concentration, enters into the first, second, third, and fourth trances. He does not take up the sign of those trances and trance limbs, and with the thus concentrated thought he experiences the various kinds of psychic power. With the heavenly ear element he hears sounds both heavenly and human. Likewise he wisely knows the thought of other beings and persons, too. He wisely knows, as it really is, a thought without anything above it as a thought without anything above it. He remembers his various previous lives. With the heavenly eye, pure and surpassing that of men, he sees beings as they die, and are reborn, too. He sees that beings fear. According to their deeds. This should be worked out in detail. Based on these five super knowledges, he passes on from Buddha field to Buddha field, honoring the Buddhas and lords, planting wholesome roots, maturing beings, and purifying the Buddha field. And he does not dedicate these wholesome roots to the level of the disciples and Pratyeka Buddhas, as before. Subhuti. How does the Bodhisattva, having stood in the perfection of concentration, acquire the perfection of wisdom? The Lord. Here the Bodhisattva, the Great Being, having stood in the perfection of concentration, does not apprehend form, or any of the other skandhas, or the perfections, the applications of mindfulness, to the knowledge of all modes, the conditioned element, the unconditioned element. Not apprehending them, he does not put them together. Not putting them together, he does not produce or stop them. And why? Because, whether Tathagatas are produced or not, firmly established is the established order of these dharmas, firmly established is the dharma element, and that is neither produced nor stopped. Bundi's tract is his thought he becomes one who is not lacking in attentions associated with the knowledge of all modes. Subhuti. How does the Bodhisattva, having stood in the perfection of wisdom, acquire the perfection of giving? The Lord. Here the Bodhisattva, the Great Being, coursing in. The perfection of wisdom reviews all dharmas as empty. Subhuti. How does he do so? The Lord. Here. Subhuti. The Bodhisattva, the Great Being, coursing in the perfection of wisdom, does not apprehend the inward emptiness as inward emptiness, for fourteen kinds of emptiness, up to the emptiness of own marks. Having stood in these fourteen kinds of emptiness the Bodhisattva, the Great Being, does not apprehend form as empty or not empty, nor anything else, up to the unconditioned element. Coursing in this perfection of wisdom, the Bodhisattva, the Great Being, 
does not review the gift which he gives, whether it be food, or anything else as empty. Nor does he review him who gives, or him to whom.